Hey everyone, Akawaha Boy Rocks here, and you've heard the saying that something's dumber than a box of rocks. Well, I'm going to talk about that a little bit, and I don't think a box of rocks is all that dumb. Well, and that's a pretty that's a pretty broad topic. So let's narrow it down a little bit. Let's narrow it down to giving gifts. Lots of us give gifts, pretty much any of us that are involved in a hobby, excuse me, mosquito, um, any of us that are involved in a hobby want other people to like our hobby. We spend lots of money on our hobby and we want to give things as gifts. And rocks are no different. You know, maybe you make cabochons and you wire wrap them you know, you do whatever, you give things as gifts. There's lots about this. Um, Jared over at Currently Rock Hounding did, uh, made some comments in some of his videos, I'll link below, about tumblers and people giving tumblers as gifts and how that works out. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Two, um, he's got his podcast, Previously Rock Hounding, and in one of those old magazines they were looking at. They talked about the fact that you give rocks as gifts and then eventually everyone you know has got one of whatever it is you've done. So there's that too, but I like to give boxes of rocks as gifts, but a very specific box of rocks. So I'm gonna bring you over here to the table and talk about that. Okay, here's my box of rocks. So Christmas time 2020, when everything was closed because of COVID, and not making a comment on whether or not it should have been, just it was. Uh, where I work, social activities are real important to everybody. Usually there's a holiday potluck between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and we could not do any of that. Everyone still had to be socially distanced, masks, all of that stuff. So we still wanted to get together. So what I came up with was Zen Garden in a box. And a lot of us, we've got all these rocks. Uh, it's been mentioned many times, many places. When you rock hound on public land, you're not supposed to be selling those rocks. So you build up rocks. Sometimes you got nothing to do with them. So something like this was both a fun activity for us and something for me to do with some of my rocks. So it comes, you know, I give it all packed up in a box. Now there's lots of different boxes, you know, Amazon, lots of different size and shape boxes. This is the one that I thought worked pretty well. First thing is a plastic sheet. Uh, we'll get to that. There's another thing that's not in here, and I generally do some printed information about the rocks, especially the ones that I've collected. So I'll include that. And instead of having a bag of rocks like this, everything will be individually bagged and labeled so that everyone knows what it is they've got. So the specimens, that's the most important part. So I've got some different things here just for us to play with now. You wee old Zen Garden rake. I would get these off of Amazon or eBay. You know, these were a little bit expensive. They were a couple bucks a piece. If you order them from overseas, sometimes you can get a bunch of them, a dozen or so, and get them down to about a buck. Speaking of a buck, I buy these bags of craft sand at the dollar store, which I think is now the dollar and a quarter store, but I put some of those in there, and then I buy the uh, half cubic yard or whatever, not cubic yard, half cubic foot, half a cubic yard would be quite a bit, of pea gravel um, at the home improvement stores, and just wash it in a colander and put some of that in there. So. You know, everyone got something like this in a box, and we had a great time with it. I'm going to bring you over a little bit closer and show you what something like this might look like. 
Okay, I'm just going to throw something together here. One of the great things about this is you can be creative and whatever you do, you can undo it and redo it. So I've got my plastic sheet here. So I'm gonna start with that. Hopefully it's not causing too much noise. So, cut me a strip of that. And then, there's no really right or wrong way to do this, but I'm going to tape Masking tape is not the best thing to use either, but that's what I had out here. Tape some of that in there. And this I use, to, I use that to separate. So we'll get this all set up. There's part of our box with pea gravel. And I've already got a box of sand open. It's got a few dead bugs in it, but I'm just going to use it for this because I don't want to open new packages. So we're going to put our sand over here. Might as well use the rake for what the rake's for. Get that cobweb stuff out of there. This dollar store sand's nice and bright and shiny, sparkly. All right. You can also, along with these rakes, you can get kits that have the little pagodas and fuzzy plastic plants like you would get for railroad model railroads and stuff. You can get all that to dress this up, but we're not going to do that. So let's look at what we've got for rocks. So you've seen these before, the thunder eggs. So maybe we put a couple of those in here. Got a piece of rose quartz. Let's put that over here in the gravel. Got another thunder egg. Sometimes I like to put some cabochons in them. Let's put those around. Got one of these desert rose things. couple of agates, something I started that didn't turn out. Okay, so you can do all kinds of stuff. Oh, here's a get this out of here. Here's a Moroccan geode. Throw that in there. So you can kind of see how this could be entertaining to sit around and really spend an hour or so and get creative. And I have one sitting on my desk. I'll, I'll try and take some pictures and, and put it in, maybe get some pictures 
of some of my other team members ones they did mine gets rearranged every few months i rearrange it re-rake the sand but it's a great great conversation starter you know, people come into my office to to get service and i you know while i'm doing whatever it is they need me to do they're looking at the different rocks and asking me about them and it's just a fun way if uh, you got rocks you rocks you cut rocks you found like this i can't sell this i gathered that at, on public land so i can't sell it but i can give it away so it's a great thing to do with your rocks people really enjoy it i've um, i've gotten some people really excited um, giving them one of these things and since you've got the plastic in here you can you, know, you can get your gravel out separate your sand out really easily and start over and do something completely different so hopefully you got a couple of ideas out of seeing how you can do a little desktop zen garden and that makes a great gift now i'm going to expand a little bit on what currently rock hounding said um, about tumblers and kind of visually show you why that might not be the best gift for somebody um, and especially kids now there's lots of great youtube channels on tumbling but uh, if you look at some of the videos that uh, Captain Cortez has been putting out, uh, Ragnar, uh, he's been putting out some great videos that really show you just how frustrating it can be sometimes to tumble. And you know, they say you know, don't buy art for people or don't pick a hobby for people. Well. When you get somebody a tumbler, even if they like rocks and they think your shiny rocks that you've created are cool, you know, you're really getting them into a big commitment. So let's take a look at you know, what someone might buy as a tumbler gift and what you really need to do some good tumbling. All right, forgive the dustiness of some of this stuff. It doesn't get used by me a whole lot for some of the reasons we'll discuss. So this is what um, a lot of people might buy for their grandkids or kids or something. Maybe it comes with some rocks or you give them some rocks to get started tumbling. And both of the tumblers I'm going to show you are probably better quality and more expensive than most of the tumblers that people are going to give as gifts. So a lot of these come with a little pack of grits, not grits you eat, grits you tumble with. So this has the four different stages. Uh, I usually, I liked to do more than four stages, but a lot of people do four. So there's supposed to be just enough to do one load of rocks in this barrel. And that's pretty much what comes with it. Looks pretty simple, right? A week and four different grits, one, you know, one moon, and you've got some pretty shiny rocks. Well, as has been said before, that's not the way it works. Let's look at more of what you really need to do this as a hobby. All right, this is a little bit more what an actual tumbling setup would look like. So, you know, everyone sells these one barrel tumblers but really, at a minimum, you need two barrels because one of the main problems with this and one of the reasons is it isn't great for kids or um, not neat freaks like me. Um, not that it's not good for neat freaks, it's that I'm not a neat freak. 
is if you transfer grit from one stage to the next, you might as well just start over. So you need a minimum one barrel for your tumbling grits and one for your polish. I had set up where each grit had its own barrel and I would run these on the two barrel Lortone here and then I could do the polish and the thumbler. And you know, forget buying grits in this quantity, you're buying grits in this quantity or else you're going to be just, you know, might as well give them your bank account number to keep ordering them like this. You're going to need some other things too. Um, these ceramic pellets, they're used to, especially if you've got larger rocks, they're used to fill empty space and it helps to keep the grit in contact with the rocks as it goes around instead of the grit just gathering in the empty space between the rocks. So you need some of that. You're also going to need some plastic pellets. These things are used in the later stages to cushion the rocks so that they don't um, bruise, chip, scratch, all of that. So I've got four different you know, five pound, 10 pound, I think they're five pound um, things of grit that I had to buy. Uh, not everybody uses this, but some people use borax in with the final stage or after the final stage even to help with the polish. These tumbler components don't last forever, so you're gonna need a supply of belts to replace the belts. You're going to need either some cerium oxide or alumina to actually do the polishing step. So, you know, from a kit you'll see on Amazon to reality, you'll see kind of why this isn't the best thing just to give, especially a kid, to get them started into rocks. Something like, um, as Jared mentioned, the G Crack Your Own Geodes, or something they can play with like the Zen Garden in a Box might be something better to see if it's going to hold their interest. All right, hopefully you enjoyed kind of seeing some you know, different gift options with rocks and I obviously have a, a little slant as to what I think works best, but you can decide for yourself uh, something like this that someone can spend an hour or two on and sit off to the side and continue to enjoy. Something like this. And granted, they can fill that up and let it run, and then it just kind of mostly runs itself for a week or so till you have to change the grid out, wash everything, put new grid in, or go to the next step, or whatever point in the process you are, but you get the idea. So, I will see you next time.